So we have Casey Bean here from uh, uh, Bellflower, California. Casey, how long have we known each other? About 10 years now? It's been a while. Much too <laughs> long. I mean, no. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's been a good good long uh, while. I, I'd say uh, uh, six years, maybe. At least. Probably more than that. Probably more than that. About time six. does fly. Time, time does fly, bro. But brother, yeah. um, I always enjoy being part of your Bible studies on Monday nights, and I hope that more people will join us with that, whether it's on Zoom or live in Wine Gardens. But one thing you do is um, you bring you, you study the Word of God ahead of time, and you bring out a passage and a, and a bunch of uh, scriptures that go along with it, cross-references, and then you open it up for everyone to participate, for everyone to have their turn to read or to comment what the Lord's showing them through that scripture. And it's not only you, it's kind of a, a team effort. We're all, all kind of digging into God's word together and, um, you know, kind of piggybacking off each other and stuff. And it's, it's a really neat experience. Oh, yeah. I love it. And I'm glad I'm glad uh, to have you there. I, I, I love other people participating. And uh, we, we um, you know, we, we read uh, God's word. And and um, like I, I keep telling you guys, you know, um, about some people like like the red letter words, you know, and. And I, I and I always tell you, um, I I think they should all be read, and that they should, <laughs> and, and that they should all be read out loud. <laughs> yes, sir. Proclaim the word of God. Amen. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's not quite midnight here on the West Coast because it's only what's eight, almost eight thirty. But for people that are on the East Coast, it's very much approaching 2023 for them because there there's a three hour difference right now. It's 11 26 for them. So, um, you know, you're going to be one of the last things that they experience before their new year. And I, I, I'm understanding you're going you're to give us a message and also an, an opportunity to participate in Holy Communion. Is that correct? That's right. Amen. So, brother, um, can I say a little prayer before you get started? Oh, that'd be great. Let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, rejoicing, Lord God, and all you've done this year, Lord God, and all you've done this evening through each and every um, artist. And um, and we just pray, Lord, that you just fill up um, uh, Casey to overflowing with the Holy Ghost and with wisdom so he can share your word and proclaim it with authority, Lord God, and that we would receive it. Every one of us would receive it and grow according to what we hear from your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, brother. I'm going to step out of your way and let you take it on, brother. All right. Thank you, Brad. You got it, man. Amen. All right. Uh, this evening, I am going to be starting in Exodus chapter 20. And um, this is about the Ten Commandments. And um, let's see. And uh, you guys probably heard them before, but that's all right. We're going to go over it again. It says, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. It says, You shall have no you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You shall look for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Turn this down a little bit. <clears throat> Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, 
You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. And so this, these are the Ten Commandments, and we've, we've heard them before, and uh, I'm pretty sure pretty much everybody has heard these before. We've maybe even seen the movie, The Ten Commandments, and uh, Moses and, and uh, God speaking to him from a, a, a burning bush, and, and uh, that these were uh, written by the, the hand of God on, in stone and stuff. But, you know, uh, one of the problems was is that this was given to the Jewish people, and... and um, and as as we know that it, these uh, com these are the commandments of God in order to stay in good standing with God, and um, and uh, apparently we 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 are not e able to keep them, and uh, so therefore he came up with a uh, um, with a uh, an alternative way or so another way of to uh, smooth things over with himself was to offer up uh, animal sacrifices. And these are these were things that they they had to do back then. But we know now that Jesus is our our sacrifice. He is the sacrificial Lamb of God, and and because of His blood shed, that we are um, that that we ha have um, fellowship with God. And that that had had to be done. The, the the sacrificial Lamb of God, the the death of Jesus on the cross. He did. He died that sacrificial death for each one of us personally. And um, so anyways, I, what I wanted to look at was um, some of the cross references, like, like Brad said, I, I do the, I do the, uh, I like to look at cross references. And the one I looked at for, uh, for verse three, which was, um, you shall have no other gods before me. And I, and I found it in uh, Matthew chapter 22. And, um, let me find my my spot here. Matthew chapter twenty two, in uh, verse um, thirty four through forty, and it's about um, the greatest commandment. And it says. Says, but when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing them and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two, com two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So these these are the these on these two things lays, lays the whole the whole thing the law and the prophets it says. And then for um, for verse four, what it says, you shall not make yourself a car a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth. You know, so you shall not make any carved image, no idols. And I find that in John chapter 4. Um, verse, uh, verse 21 through 26. It says, um, I think he was speaking to the woman at the well. And he says, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. And not to worship idols, you know. We we have these idols. He's talking about these carved eye images, idols, and stuff. And you know, we we have other other uh, 
things that we might consider idols, my TV, you know, uh, my laptop, you know, and stuff like that. Or maybe me, no, <laughs> worship myself, you know, hey, but um, that, I, I believe that, you know, that's what he's talking about. Don't, don't, don't worship all of these, these things that we do. But he says that um, he's looking for those that will wor worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, God is spirit and, and, he, and he, he wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah, don't have any idols. And then the, the next one I wanted to look at um, was from verse 6, I believe. And he says, um, But he shows mercy to thousands. He, he shows the mercy who love me and keep my commandments. And so God, he has this, his mercy. He loves, he loves us. It says, for those who keep his commandments. And I, I found one in, in, um, in Psalm uh, 103, starting with verse 8. It says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep us keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And so, Let's see. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, he, his days are all like grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to chil his children's children to such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his commandments, to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. And so he says that for those who keep his commandments, you know, and he, he has this, this love for us, his love and his mercy. And he, it talks about our, our, our sins, our iniquities, that he remembers no more. As far as the east is from the west, and, and then in, in verse 17, it says, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Wow, and, and, I, and I, I think of, of eternity too, you know, not, not just in this lifetime, but in eternity. Okay, the next one was, um, number seven, let's see, verse seven, and back in the Ten Commandments. It says, "You shall not take the name of your Lord, the Lord your God, in vain, for the Lord will hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain." Uh oh, he's going to take him guiltless. You you lose use the Lord's name in vain, and and let's see. Um, I I found that in in Matthew chapter five, and um, many of you might know that in Matthew chapter five he's speaking of the um, it's from the Sermon on the Mount. And this I'm going to start with verse thirty three though. Let's see, it says, Jesus forbids oaths. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. For... Whatever is more than these is from the evil one. And he says, you know, don't don't take these oaths. You know, and, and people, um, what, what he was talking about back there in, in, in the Ten Commandments, he says, you shall not take the, the, name, the name of the Lord your God in vain. You know, and I, and I think of um, maybe, maybe uh, taking the name, the name of our Lord Jesus, that, you know, Christ. Sometimes, you know, they, they say, oh, people use his name as a, as a swear word. You know, Jesus H. Christ, you know, why, why is his name, his middle name H? I don't know. I think it's Jesus, the Holy Christ. But, you know, the, the, I, I don't think, it, I don't think of, of it as meaning that. The way I think of it as meaning is taking the Christ, the name Christ to myself. I call myself a Christian. 
you know, and I should not do that in vain. I, I need to I need to make sure that when I say that I am a Christian, that I that I really mean it. And and I, I it's like taking the oath. Yes, let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. So be careful when you call yourself Christian. <laughs> OK. Um, the next one was. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, remember the Sabbath day. Now, now he's talking about remember that Sabbath day, you know, keep it holy. And in six days, you know, the the um, the Lord, you know, created the earth and then he rested. But I, I look, wanted to look at Hebrews chapter 10. And. Um, and in there, it says. It talks about um, do not not forsaking the assembling, I think. Uh, let's see, verse 23 through 25. It says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. And I, I like to believe that means, you know, we should go to church. We need to go to church. Don't don't forsake that that gathering of 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 the of the the saints, you know, and um, so like like just because you you can't like I mean hey it's raining out here in Southern California today hey, I can't go to church man it's raining you know oh, I can't go to church tomorrow it's football you know something like that you know we need, don't forsake that the assembling okay and then um, let's see and down in uh, um, the part back in the Ten Commandments says, "Honor your father and your mother." You know, so so it'll go, it'll go well for you. And I I want to look at Ephesians. And um, in Ephesians chapter six, it says, "Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and and you know live long on the earth." And fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. And, you know, and and I, I just wish that my parents had brought me up in in the in the admonition of the ways of the Lord. You know, but we need to honor them anyways, and um, you know, so that it goes goes well with us. But you know, I I, I liked um, earlier there was a, the guy with his child that was singing singing the worship songs. You know. That that's that's a that's a good testament right there about somebody that's bringing their children up in the Lord. Praise God for that. Okay. Um, now back into the, the commandments. Um, you shall not murder. And then I, I see that in Matthew chapter five. Back to Matthew chapter five and in in the the Sermon on the Mount and. Uh, you know, Jesus says, um, you know, that murder, murder is, is from, is in, in our heart. Murder begins in the heart is what it says. It says, you have heard that it was said to old you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whoever says to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. And th this is, it, it's not the act of committing murder, but it's its about just in, the heart, in, in our thoughts and in our heart that we are guilty of this uh, commandment. Then, um, Adultery, talking about adultery, should not commit adultery. And then I'm going to look at um, verse 27 and 28. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And uh, therefore, that's that's all it takes to, you know, not the act of adultery, but just the, having this lust for some, uh, someone in your heart. Is it, and you are guilty of that commandment. And then, of course, about um, loving your neighbor. Um, that's in in Romans chapter uh, chapter thirteen. 
and in this one, he's 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 talked about you know you show you know all all of these other uh, commandments that are on there. And it says in uh, chapter thirteen, starting with verse eight, love your neighbor. It says, owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For commandments, for the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And so this is the fulfillment of the law, is to love love each other. Then um, back to uh, um, Matthew chapter 5. I wanted to go back to Matthew chapter 5 and look at um, Christ fulfills the law is what it says here in um, Matthew chapter 5 starting with verse 17 and so he says do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets I did not come to destroy but to fulfill for surely I say to you till heaven and earth pass away one jot one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled Whoever therefore breaks the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And in one area he says, you know, um, John the Baptist was one of the greatest and, and um, of, you know, even of all the prophets and stuff. But he says that the least in the kingdom of God the least of the saints in the kingdom of God is is even greater than than John the Baptist, and so therefore we are better than the scribes and Pharisees. Then, um, real quick, I want to look at the Beatitudes, and and it says, in in here, Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he says, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted." Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And it says, um, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And he said rejoice because you're being persecuted. And some of this stuff, it's, it's going to be hard for us to do. And even as a man of God, I find it hard to do. And then there's one in here that says, go the extra mile. And it says, go the second mile. It says, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take you away your tunic, let him have their cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with them too. Give to him who asks you and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. And I have a hard time with this one, you know. Uh, if somebody's going to slap me in the face, I... I'm going to want to do, I'm going to want to slap them back for, for sure. You know, so I have, I, I myself have a hard time with this one. Okay. And, and so, um, we, we find it kind of hard to, to be able to do these things. But, you know, he, he says this is what we ought to be, the way we ought to be doing. The kind of person that we are. It, and it's not easy to do these things. But now we come to, uh, the the institution of the Lord's Supper, and I, I looked that up in First uh, Corinthians chapter eleven, starting with verse twenty three. It says, "For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me." In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, "This." cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as you eat and drink bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. But then it goes on to say, therefore whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup 
of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body of the, and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. You know, and, and so we, we need to examine ourselves before we, we do these things. And, and we just went over the Ten Commandments, and we went over some of the stuff in, in the Sermon on the Mount. And we find that it's hard for us to do these things and, and to, to um, measure up to the kind of man that, that God would have us to be. And so I, I examine myself, and I, I say, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, Lord, but I come up short. In the Bible, it says, be careful if you think you stand, at least you fall. You know, and, and, and that's just it. We have to be careful if we think we stand. Because I, 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 I think I'm standing, but I have to be, be, be on watch, you know. Then um, I wanted to look real quick at, um, at uh, Matthew chapter uh, 26. And, and this is um, Jesus when, when he was uh, taking the Lord's Supper, celebrating the Passover with his disciples. And in verse 23, it says, um, he who did, no, let's see, that can't be it. Uh, verse 20. <laughs> okay. When evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. Now as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and each of them began to say, Lord, is it I? And that's what we need to say. We need to examine ourselves and say, Lord, is it I? Am I, am I worthy enough? Am I, am I examining myself enough? You know, before I take of the Lord's Supper. We are going to take of the Lord's Supper. We're going to have the, the bread and, and, and the juice. I hope you guys are prepared for that. And, and so we examine ourselves. And, and these, these are his disciples that had been with him for, for three years. And they're saying to him, Lord, is it I? Am I the one that betrayed you? You know, and, and it doesn't matter how long we've been with walking with the Lord. You know, we have to be able to examine ourselves and, and, and say, you know, can I do better maybe? Something like that. So anyways, we'll go back to um, um, the, the communion. And he says in uh, verse 23, he says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that's what we, we do. We take and eat. And this is his broken body and, and him, him being beaten and, and, and uh, even crucified. And, and um, uh, you know, all the suffering that he went through. Is, he, um, they say that his... his um, his stripes have healed me and, and stuff like that. But he says, take and eat in, in remembrance of me. So let's go ahead and partake of the bread. And so he gave thanks and did that. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so this is the blood, you know, and we know that we're not worthy. We're, we are not. We, we are evil, evil, wretched. But he says that we're not. He calls us saints. He says that we are his own special people. And the only way that we have got that is because of that blood that was spilled on the cross. The sacrificial death that was given. He is the... The, the sacrificial lamb of God that died for our sin, personally mine and yours. And he says, whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake. All right. One last one is um, Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Sarah says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, 
but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. We need to work it out, you know. It's it's like exercising. You you work out, you know. We need to exercise our our faith. We need to exercise for our salvation. And and it, and it says take heed, you know, to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And that means to to really get into it, you know, don't don't be wishy-washy about it. This is very important stuff. And his, God is going to do this stuff. He's going to make a change in our life. He's he's going to cause that fruit to grow in our life and and other people will see it and all these things will be to his glory not not to my glory but to his glory and we do all these things and and share these things with 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 others for his glory let's pray thank you lord thank you for another opportunity to share you with others lord and we're thankful for uh, the the communion the message that you have given us lord that we know you know we're not we don't measure up. We're not worthy enough, Lord, to come before you, Lord. But but because of, of your son, Jesus, dying on the cross for our sins, Lord, that you have have uh, made a way for us to, to be able to come to you and come to you boldly in prayer, Lord, and be thankful and, and know that we are loved, that you're doing a work, Lord. Keep your hands on us, Lord. Keep molding us into the likeness of your son, Jesus. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. <laughs> Amen, brother. And you know what's really neat is when we take communion, we are uniting ourselves as the body of Christ. You know, and so we're reaching our hand across the ocean to Queensland, Australia, over here to Bellflower, California, Hatboro, Pennsylvania, Melbourne, uh, Florida, Gardner, Massachusetts, Kansas City, Missouri, Richmond Hill, Georgia, doesn't matter. Whoever people are tuning in from, we're joining in. We are the body of Christ. Listen, guys, you could be Baptist, you could be Methodist, all this stuff. There's only one body of Christ. Yep. There aren't many bodies of Christ running around. No, there's one. It is the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Bible says he's put us together as living stones, you know. Oh, no, we're just another brick in the wall. But you, you know what? We're living stones. We shouldn't be fighting with each other and knocking each other out of the wall. Man, we need to join together hand in hand, support each other, love each other, correct each other, right? Correct each other, but in love. Thank you, brother, for, for sharing that, brother, the way that the New Testament, um, you know, uh, affirms so much of what we read in the, the Ten Commandments. And it sometimes even goes beyond and says it's not, a, it's not about the external. It's about your heart. Yeah, you know, um, one one of the things I wanted to mention was about um, it helped me with my salvation was when I heard that part about work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, and and this was before I even surrendered my life to Christ, and and there was a guy on TV saying, uh, you know what you need to do, you know what it's going to take, work it out with God, you know, and and pray like be praying with them, working it out, and then yes. and then. Like, what's it going to take to get you to go to church? What's it going to take for you to Amen. pray? What's it going to take for you to read your Bible? And then and then talk it over with God. And when you're done talking it over with God in prayer, and your, phrase, and your prayer in, in the phrase, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Yes. And, and uh, you know, you, you know what it's going to take. So let's get with it. And uh, when, when God starts doing stuff in your life, you know, make sure you do it with that fear and trembling. It's very important. And uh, heed what what he tells you to do. Amen, brother. All right, let's just um, unmute. Let's give some love to Pastor Casey here tonight. Casey Bean from yeah. Orange County, from uh, LA County, uh, <laughs> Belfar actually, Belfar, California. Thank you, brother. And um, what a blessing! What a blessing! We brought we're bringing in the new year with the body and the blood of Christ symbolized here. And I can't see it. And these elements here. And what, what better way, you know, for us to be praising the Lord, partaking of uh, in communion, praying and fellowshipping together. I can't think of a better way. I would rather be doing this than be out in some bar or something else, right? You got the word of God right there. All right, brother. I'm going to bring in Hank. So th thank you, Casey. God bless you, brother. And we're going to bring in our next.